How's it going guys and welcome to today's video. So in this video I'm going to be discussing a problem on a BMW uh, 3 Series E90 and it's going to be a little bit different of a start to this video. <clears throat> so a uh, vehicle came in, had traction control uh, warning light on permanently, it also had a brake warning light on and I went to do a diagnostic on it. That diagnostic involved running fault codes and doing uh, preliminary checks. So the actual second part of this video you're going to see, I'm going to take you through that and show you the, the different work i done on it and um, the, the results on it. The reason I don't have the first section of it is I just went to um, edit this video last night and I found out that the all of my first clips were unusable. So I didn't want to scrap this video because I felt it would be very useful to people and it is something that is probably quite common from the research I've done. It seems to pop up quite a lot. The fall code off the top of my head, I believe is a hydraulic pressure unit failure. Um, the code, I'm not 100% on the code, 5E20 or something like that, but it's a pressure, a hydraulic uh, pressure unit failure was the, was the actual wording on my Delphi um, diagnostic tool that I used for initial scan. Uh, with that said, I'm gonna jump into the second part of this video now, which shows me actually um, removing the unit, and then I, I show the um, separation of the hydraulic unit, um, the DSE unit, to fit back together again. Just down here, there was a cover that's lifted up. I have it down on the floor there and I pull this back just a little bit to make room and the next steps would be to disconnect this item here and down below that you can see just down there there is a nut to remove another one straight down there and another one down there and that holds the whole unit down in position. So remove those three. Um, I can't see any more holding them down, so I do believe it is just those three. Disconnect all of these pipes and pull that up out of the way. My plan is I uh, bought a second-hand pump and module complete that had been tested online. So the fact that I bought a complete and I know that that's working, I'm gonna swap this module over onto uh, the new one that I got and I won't have to do any coding or programming of any type and I believe that the pump here has failed uh, I think this is the main issue and the fact that this is still good will leave me swapping it over and it'll be just straight plug and play if uh, the module is good in your own one and you swap it over and it's just the pump that failed um, you will be able to plug it in and you won't have to do any um, any additional work on that so that is the plan I will have to put this on the um, on the diagnostic tool to do an ABS uh, bleed assisted bleed uh, to get all the air out but that will be when everything is back together first first things first let's go ahead and start disconnecting the brake line pipes and the brackets that's holding this unit down so I'll check back in with you after I have disconnected the majority of these current position with this is I uh, drain the reservoir um, you've seen that in the last clip. I used this tool here to do that. Sucked out as much as I possibly could out of it. And now I've started to disconnect the lines here. So if you look just down here, uh, I'm using caps to block off the lines. So I'm using old tire valve caps that I have to just slow down the brake fluid coming out. And I'm going to set about taking all of these out now as well. 
back to here when I have them all disconnected and plugged off I'll lift this up out of position and I'll remove the uh, bracket nuts to make a bit more space I've cable tied some of the pipes out of the way and use hooks just to put them in a position where I have more access to lift up the unit and to do that I also removed this pipe here and disconnected it from the back I slackened off this one down here as well so it could be moved out in this position easily to the side I don't have much more space I can gain here without putting uh, tension on the pipe so I'm trying to see if I can uh, maneuver it up out in in this area these two pipes here um, are rigid when you when you get it to that certain point as is this one here so I don't want to stress them beyond that and uh, this is free so it will be a case of jiggling and seeing if I can rock it up out of position and tilt it beyond it beyond these pipes now I just got it lifted up out of position there it is extremely tight and the way I managed to do it was to lift this side here out of the bracket jiggle it kind of move it that way and then tilt it up and pull it through I had to push this cable back quite a bit just to allow, allow enough room on this pump side area here to uh, to maneuver back the way but that is it I have it up out of position I'm going to bring it over to the bench and I'm going to show you the next process in uh, swapping over the module side of this um, to the new one this is the old unit that I just removed and this is the unit that I bought um, it's a tested second-hand unit that's working 100% so what I um, plan on doing is swapping this unit here over to this and making it a plug-and-play system I have to swap over the bracket on the underside which is just three 10 mil bolts nice and simple just a comparison if you see there the numbers are exactly the same three four five two six seven seven one four eight seven stroke zero one and on the pump as well they match up so all part numbers are the exact same that's what you need to do on these I have the bracket swapped over now and to remove the module it's these T20s here there's one long one there and a shorter one here and it separates like that you just pull it straight back and you do the same on the other side okay my battery died midway through through that so I decided I have this installed now but I decided to come back and show you this is the module itself held in by two screws which are here to T20 torque heads and this is the pump so I've it all back together now fluid topped up and I even have the system all bled um, in the bleeding process in this you go through it manually uh, all the way through so right hand rear uh, left hand rear right hand front left hand front is the sequence and then it's an assisted bleed after that meaning you will get the abs module to uh, pump through and after that pumps through for a few seconds it's pumped the pedal you'll need two people doing it and um, yeah, a scan tool that is capable of uh, of doing that bleeding but it's all good on that side now so the next thing is to bring it for a test drive and uh, see how it's running i just have to put this plastic cover down and route this cable in again yeah so that is pretty much it um everything has tightened up down here this is connected up back here and um, this is up to the level now as well and it is just cover reroute this and it's good to go and we'll see we'll see what it looks like after that and see if this has been a success or not just bringing it for its first road test now and the trash control warning light has gone off i still have that brake warning light at the top 
that is to do with the um, initial problem of uh, brake pad warning on the rear so I'll have to look into that further but the good news is that the the very good news is that the main traction control warning light is gone the module fixed the problem the swapping over the module and the new pump um, solved that and uh, it also is braking very well so the brake bleeding has been a success there's no spongy braking or anything like that so that's very good